And we're recording. So we are good at IT. But let's check the video. Give me a little audio. A little bit of audio here. Plenty. Um, Hey everyone, welcome to Unthink Me. We're going to do a little uh, kind of business and personality kind of thing. This is Adam, Senor... And James. That's right. Namaste to you all. <laughs> you know, in conversation and with scheduling, timing, planning, that whole realm of things, um, how do you deal with diarrhea of the mouth, if you will? How do you deal with people who have a thousand points for every point you make People who spend 90% of the talking time talking to you, how do you deal with this kind of phenomena? What we discussed how a little are you doing bit this morning. Uh, oh, God, just so good. Great. Uh, enjoying Me all too. of this snow in the East Coast. Uh, my wife is almost dead from shoveling the, the, the driveway this morning. Note, note that her, you're listing you're listing positive things in t- <laughs> yes my wife uh, my wife recently passed and uh, it's a good sunny day today <laughs> <laughs> yes she might get better she, she, she got better um, so yeah when when dealing with someone in business or in personal life we always meet those friends um, out or at the house or on a call that you just seem to not be able to get off the call. <laughs> Or out of the coffee shop, or out of the or meeting, or even or the next like to move to where you want it to go to to be in a leadership in the interpersonal mm-hmm. setting. So uh, one of the things that Adam has grown up with, and I've noticed it in his life, is he felt it was polite to just allow the other person to sort of take the reins and dictate where the conversation is going to go, how long it's going to be. Um, and what points will be heard and what points won't be heard. So I was talking a little bit about, let's let's tackle timing first. Um, I am a person who has a pretty open schedule, but there are days that I have multiple meetings and they're fairly back-to-back. Um, I have people all over the country that I meet with uh, virtually, and so I have to keep track of my time, keep track of time zones and things like that. So I find the easiest thing for the pill for myself and the other person to swallow is at the very beginning of the meeting. You know, you send the digital invite and the digital invite says, meet this time, you know, in this chat room or whatever. And then here's the time block. Letting the other person know, notifying the other person that that time block is specific. So, hey, Adam, thanks for meeting with me today. Um, I hope all is well. I just want to say right before we get started, um, I I have a hard stop in 30 minutes. Uh, I've got another meeting right after this. So before we even get going, I just want you to know, um, I'll give you a five minutes heads up, but I just want you to know there's a hard stop. Um, So let's get started. We're, we're We're front loading the interaction with the expectation more. We, we want to create that expectation it's, clearly so that we won't be blamed for shifting gears later on. It's like an upfront contract. If they say, oh, no, yeah. I, I need an hour at least. Like, okay, great. Let's schedule an hour some other time. I'm not, if you need an hour, I'm not going to break it up into two half hours because we're going we're gonna to build up. We're going to get the steam going. We're going to get the momentum and then pause and then days, hours, whatever later. Like, okay, now we need to build up again and get the momentum going, the creative juices flowing. Um, No, if you need an hour, let's reschedule, get an hour. That gives me time. Maybe some snacks or something before that actual hard 30-minute stop. Um, Another thing I will do often is if it is a day of back-to-back meetings, I will put that hard stop 5, 10, 15 minutes before the next meeting to Mm. allow the person to, okay, we've got five minutes left to wrap this up. Um, I, I said that I have that hard stop. You're you're onto something good. Let's get going. That five minutes expires. Okay. Well, I like I said I got to leave right now. But uh, you're you're on something so golden that uh, I'll <laughs> the, the next person can wait a second, uh, and I'll just be late to this next one. But I keep in mind I will be late. So so let's put a bookend on this. That drives the other person to not want to screw over the whoever's waiting 
if there is anyone waiting, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. That's that's uh, between you and whoever. But everyone kind of wants to help each other out. And so if you say now you're cutting into Adam's time, uh, but I like what you're saying. Let's let's wrap this up kind of quickly, and I'll, I'll explain to Adam at the beginning. Hey, sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. I have a hard stop, by the way. <laughs> that previous meeting cut into and i do apologize if we need to re- and you just kind of front load it's the upfront contract if in the beginning they're saying no then okay well let's get a situation where yes is the thing i will do the exact same thing on in-person meetings if i show up to an in-person meeting and the person i'm meeting is late that does not extend the time my time with them they have wasted their time with me um, I was just telling an example of this last week of someone I was meeting uh, for like contract signing, and th- I had 45 minutes between meetings that I could go meet them, and they showed up 40 minutes late. And so uh, I was sitting there enjoying my coffee. They came in. Oh, yeah, sorry, I'm late. Yeah, no problem. Uh, we do not have time to do this. I was going to leave in five minutes anyway, uh, but I'm glad you're here. I'm going to reschedule. I have to go. Oh, we can do this really quick. You know, I'm really sorry. And then they start making excuses and and whatever. You have no right to a single minute of my time. And I gave you a block. Well, and people are going to feel that people are going to perceive that as rude. And I guess you got to just deal with that. Like, yeah, they're going to perceive. You know what they will never do again? (laughs) If they need if they need something from you, they'll never be late again. If you want something from them and they're late. I would I do the same. This particular one was a contract in my favor. No, I don't I really don't have time to do it. Although I can make some money off of this, you've wasted my time. I've got to go somewhere else. And then left. They okay. called uh the next day, called the office, rescheduled, they were on time, I was on time, it all got done. Am I actually being root for having waited forty five minutes? In a physical location, 45 minutes is outrageous. I just actually didn't have anywhere to be for 45 minutes. Virtually, I give you five. Most of the time, when you're meeting someone virtually, they will have set the time. You're turning on a computer. You're turning on a webcam. You're, five minutes is ample when there's no uh, travel time involved. In person, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. After that, now you're wasting my time, which in turn is a waste of your time. And we front loaded this a little bit just by scheduling in the first place. Uh, So time is a big one as far as the interpersonal communication part. Now, another part of this is what information you're exchanging. When it's just some friends talking, you kind of want the conversation to go super organically. But if you need something out of this conversation or they need something out of you and they start to do the filibuster or or diarrhea of the mouth. Oftentimes, it can be shut down pretty quickly with assumptive questioning. I have this problem. Um, It keeps going on. Uh, I I can't figure out a resolution for it. If someone has the problem, usually you're going to offer some sort of advice or what would the next step be. A lot of times these problems are because someone's looking at the at the problem from 10,000 feet above and it's a massive problem and they're not ground level looking at just what what's the next step? Who needs a resolution? If you're in the middle of a problem, what direction are you going to go to get out of this or solve this? When you're up here, you can't you can't see anything. You're just looking at the border of where the problem no longer exists. Like how do I how do I get there? Get back on the ground level and look at the next step. So through assumptive questioning, Adam has an issue with HelloFresh uh, as a vendor. You know, this is a business situation. I, I keep having this problem with HelloFresh. The, their boxes are brown. All of my customers want red boxes. Uh, and I just don't know where to go from here. The assumptive question is, to, okay, I'm not going to tell them they're babbling. I will have to cut them off a little bit. So they're having this issue with the boxes. Uh, really quick, what did HelloFresh say when you called them? And then pregnant pause. Don't feed them more. So what did they say when you confronted them about this? The first time that happens to you and the first time you do it, it's going to feel awkward. The person it's happening to is going to feel maybe attacked. And that feeling is because now your your pattern is interrupted. Your pattern was sort of word vomit. And it's stopped by, well, now I have to think. Did I call them and tell them about the brown boxes? Did someone else call? What did they say? 
that that puts an interrupt in the whole situation and it seems odd it's it, when when you do an assumptive question well what do they what do they say when you ask them you know this person's been mean to me and everything and i you know i just need to bring it up with you okay what happened when you confront them when you confronted them what did they say well i haven't confronted them yet sounds like that's the first thing you need to do what else what's the next thing okay we've Sounds like we've got a next step. Nobody ever needs the entire path. People like it. Most people, including myself, if I get the entire path, I will get lost <laughs> somewhere along the way. Some hurdle, some fallen tree, something's going to happen and I'll get lost. So when I ask for advice, when I'm the person needing something, I'm looking for that next step. I'm looking for the assumptive question. And that gives me an actionable item right away. Here's the next step, not the end, next step. So let's say, um, I like how we're kind of keep, we're going big and we're getting smaller and smaller with the time horizon. And so I want to go to about mm -hmm. the halfway point. Let's say like in terms of time management in the meeting, you know what okay. you're trying to accomplish. You have the goal of the meeting. You have like seven goals or whatever. And you see at the halfway point, well, we've only covered two of them and we have a deadline. Mm -hmm. We have to cover all seven. Now I'm trying to mm -hmm. accelerate the dialogue and I can see that the strategy isn't going to get us there on time. So as the leader of the situation, one of, you know, one of multiple leaders in this meeting, right. um, how do you give, give us some tips for like kind of that realm, like that, the kind of mid realm of moment to moment, like how do we keep this thing on track? How do we keep this moving towards the goal when the other person isn't moving it there and you see that or you think you see that? Typically in a meeting like this where there are multiple things, let's take um, a customer complaint, for example. I'm going to go meet a customer because they have this laundry list of complaints and they want to fire us. I will show up with all the information I need in, in one of those like manila envelopes, whatever they're called, file folders. And I'll sit down and say, okay, Adam, I understand that you wanted to have this meeting so we could resolve some issues uh, before we dive into it. And I want to hear about them. I got to let you know that I have an hour before I'm supposed to be somewhere else. I, you know, I don't want to cut you off or anything, but I want to make best use of our time. And the way we're going to do that is if you can really quickly, without getting into too much detail, just list the topics that you want to cover and so we can keep track of those. And then I'll take that folder and write down, okay, this, okay, and this, all right, yeah, great, and this, and this. And as soon as they start going into detail on one of those things, I'll rein it back in. So there's this, this, and, and then there's this. Because the other day, well, let, let's, uh, I, I do want to hear about it, but let's just, I want to make sure I want to hear all of the things that you have and not spend this whole time listening to one and we only get one resolution. Man, that's um, so that, hard. That, that What that you fair? just said is so hard for me to do. It is. It's awkward. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, practice. okay. Hold, hold on. Now we got to we got to cover these. Okay, so um, I feel like. Wait, do it again. <laughs> How did you do that? <laughs> oh, I, uh, I told so you up front. Executive... We got to cover. Yeah. <laughs> it's executive presence, and that does take practice. Um, being as soon as you walk into the room, being a boss, like you haven't said anything, and not a dick, You're... like that balance, and not a dick. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You you are a obviously leader. in leader. control of what's going on here, and you haven't said a word yet. Appearance is a lot of it. Uh, do I have five o'clock shadow? And the last time I went to the bathroom was one of my shirt sleeves like out, uh, shirt tails out, and one's in. It has a lot to do with it. How do I carry myself? Am I looking at the ground? Do I look nervous? Are my eyes darting around? Am I breathing shallow? Um, <clears throat> am I sitting with my back to the door, a wall, a window? That all plays into how okay this person's going to be when you say, hold on a second. I do want to hear everything. Um, I want to make sure we have all, are those all of our topics? And then we can dive in. If you have more topics, I need them now so we can keep this, keep this rolling. Cool. Yeah. If I walk in disheveled with my head down and like the file has like shit sticking out and there's like coffee stains on it and I try to pull that, they're like, who are you to interrupt me while I'm talking? It's all about executive presence. So, yeah. okay, we've got those things. We've got this, say, seven things. All right, so which one of these do you think is our biggest problem? Because I want to spend the most time on that one. And then we'll, you know, we'll touch on everything else. Okay, this is the biggest problem. Great. Go ahead. And I will say nothing. I will let them talk. Because eventually, 
they're either going to repeat. I do it. I've done it on this call. They're going to repeat something or it's going to start getting more and more vague. It's going to get soft. <laughs> yeah, they came in super late and their boots were dirty and they got it all over the floor and everything. And then, you know, it was raining that day. And so, you know, my boots were muddy, too. But then, OK, so um, what I'm getting here is that it was your your floor was dirty and that's what you're upset about. Well, yeah, and they were late. Okay, well, you know, we established it was raining and everything like that. I, I want my people to drive safe. So if were they, like, extraordinarily late or were they late, like, maybe rain made them a little late because they were slower? Oh, it was probably the rain. Okay, so it's the floor is the big part of this. Breakdown. There's a good book called Eat That Frog. Um, I can't remember the name of the author, but it's whatever the biggest problem is, yep. tackle that one first. There's two big problems. Tackle the uglier, meanier, yes. nastier one first. So then with these subjects, I let them go. Once they start repeating themselves or once it starts to get watered down and hearsay in there, I'll summarize. Okay, mm -hmm. the, thank you for sharing with me. I just want to make sure I'm understanding and then just summarize what they said. That's a very nice way to say, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. So big, we're staying on the big time horizon and the medium time horizon. Now let's take it more to informal, right? Because in some interactions, you didn't plan ahead. You just run into someone. In some interactions, oh, you yeah. know, you're just making a sales. So you don't have a plan, but you, you're you developing a plan as you go or mm -hmm. you have a goal or a couple goals, right? So it, let's take it a little more vague and informal in terms of how you would front load a conversation or interaction and then how you would manage the segments of time with your goals in mind, like on a date or hanging out or with your family or, you know, going to a baseball game. Like, how do you how do you manage sub points in your just interpersonal, casual interactions? Usually you don't have an agenda. <laughs> Typically, I mean, you might. Maybe it's a date that you want to ask them to like well, hang on. Let's, let's make a little example, a quick example. Like, OK. I'm in town for one day and I haven't seen okay. Uncle Bruce, Bruce Banner, my Uncle Bruce Banner. I haven't seen uh -huh. him in 10 years. I come mm -hmm. over and all he's going to do is talk about the things that have happened to him in the last few days because that's what his mm -hmm. personality is. But I want I'm, I want to have this like moment, you know, I want to have the moments I want to recap the last 10 years of one another. Right. So I have this goal that differs from their goal in the immediate moment. Like, how would you? Do you just accept that and say that I don't have a goal in this interaction? That's more or? of an acceptance. Uh, on that sort of interpersonal thing, I'd say that you knew Bruce Banner was only going to talk about this week or, you know, the guy at the gas station today. You knew that going in. So your goal, you, you set an unattainable goal by saying, I want to recap 10 years. I'm only in town this day. And I know this person is going to talk about this week. Well, then go in knowing that you're going to talk about that week and you can try to Banana, okay, I, I feel like I'm, I'm I feel like I've got that and I feel like that's kind of working, but it's like really though, I'm I'm not gonna ever have an intimate personal relationship with this person because their personality is such that they don't really think big picture. I suppose. I mean this is my approach. I On accept a, that about So people. this is a, you know, your triangle of time, quality, and money. Money has nothing to do with this. This is like mm. connection, time and something else. But on, a, on, on the time frame, you said, I'm only in town for a day. I'm sure Bruce Banner is not the only person you want to see that day. Yeah, you've set an unrealistic expectation. If you're moving to town and going to be spending multiple visits and multiple days and going to baseball games and having a catch. I, I, feel, like you, I feel like you're, you, you've nailed it, but I'm just like, so really there is no way to manipulate that situation a little bit more towards making a genuine connection rather than just allowing the other person to assert leadership in a direction that isn't all that constructive. I mean, you know what I mean? That's there what is, I do. So there That's is. the problem is I do that. Um, I accept that. <laughs> it sounds really weird and it would be awkward the first time you do it, but you put your fear out there first thing. Yes. Your Uncle Bruce, good to see you. And, you know, I haven't seen you in a long time. I Listen, I, I've got a, only a little bit of time, and I'm afraid that we're going to end up getting caught up on your last shopping trip. <laughs> just out of nothing. Like, just tell me what happened, like, in March of last year. And just go, you know, 
be a little animated and stuff, but put your fear out there for, for up front. Hey, I, you know, uh, we, we have limited time together. It's so good to see you. Let's let's uh, I, I'm afraid that we're going to get caught in like, you know, your day to day. I want to talk about and then fill in whatever you want to talk about. If they get back to the day to day, you can say, hey, uh, Uncle Bruce, that's awesome how you found a dented can and it, the label was still on and you were able to pull the label off and get 10 cents off. Uh, at the grocery store. If you remember in the beginning, I, ha- I don't have a lot of time. And it sounds weird. And it is. Yeah. It is awkward. Yeah. But the more you do it, but and the that's more leadership. You see it works. Yeah. That's leadership. Yeah. Um, it becomes less, less scripted for you. It becomes a more natural thing for you to say and do. Um, I've asked my boss, uh, he power frames situations like a maestro beautifully. Of any level, he can walk into a, a billionaire, situ- a billion dollar situation, and somehow control the room. And it's amazing. I asked him. Uh, he's married, has kids, and everything very happily. And I, I asked, "Do you power frame your father-in-law?" And he's like, "I guess you can't turn it off." Was his answer. <laughs> or sorry, yeah, I, I think does. I missed that. What is power frame? I, I think I missed that. Oh, so power framing is a little bit more of the dark arts of of conversation manipulation it's um it's getting exactly what you want out at a cost for example you own a business i want your i want to service your business or i want to be some sort of vendor or partner and then this other person is your partner that i don't think can make any decisions that might be an assumption on mine or i might actually know that this person is just kind of tagging along so that you feel you've got a, a posse. So we sit down uh, at a restaurant, okay? We sit down, and I'm looking around for what's missing. That's all. I, I don't care what it is. Oh, there's two sets of silverware here. There's a third. Right before they sit down, hey, can you do me a favor qu- real quick? Like, pretty please? Could you grab that bit of silverware off that table real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay. And in the situation, it's fluid, and nothing happened. But you just controlled their actions yeah. before they even sat. You, yeah. no, you're not allowed to sit down. You're going to do something for me first. Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. That's I just hadn't heard the, the power side. framing term before. I, I get that, yeah. I have, a, I have like two directions I really want to go with this topic that we're, that with this terrain that we're in. But we haven't mm-hmm. yet talked about um, the immediate moment now. So that's, so we talked about the whole meeting or interaction. We've talked about structuring out the segmenting of it. Now, what about just... In the present moment, a great a great example to frame it, I suppose, is uh, you're aware of this. Like with with my grandma, when I lived with my grandma, she was always just like, "What did you eat yesterday?" You know, like, "Oh, I have uh, to run to the." And just talking about this stuff that, like, okay, I'm like a college guy. I don't care about this like cleaning the counter stuff. But she's a brilliant woman, a, li- a literary scholar, and if you actually think about it for a second and ask her questions about what the 1920s were like, you had this amazing mm-hmm. experience. And I, I, I've talked about this in a couple videos, but that's me not exercising the leadership properly when I'm getting frustrated about that. It shouldn't. So acceptance again, but it's like, okay, let's say I do accept it. And I'm trying to always exert a little bit of, um, you know, executive presence, at least uh, interpersonal presence that, that makes that gives me a little bit more leadership of the situation to get my so, goals out of the interaction. It sounds like you didn't have a goal. You were trying to sneak by. <laughs> what did you eat yesterday is a question like in passing. Yeah. So then you or, or, or to broaden it out, like people don't like small talk, right? They're like, let's get to the heart of the matter. That kind of thing. Because you want to lead the situation to a deeper level, let's say. And mm-hmm. you don't want to. You, you know, you're, you're, you can accept that we're going to just small talk for this whole 20 minute bus ride, but you're like, I want to push it in this direction. I want to get, mm-hmm. I want to kind of be more in control of the conversation because I have this like idea that I can produce a good outcome from it if I'm a little bit more on top of it. Um, you can close the door on their statement by basically summarizing. So Keep out the we're talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to you about this. So you, you, if you want to speed through, you, you, you don't have to be rude, but you stay factual. So, uh, honey, what did you eat yesterday? Well, I had a banana, an apple, uh, <laughs> a slice of pizza, a bagel with cream cheese, and yogurt. Is that going to be enough? I worry about you sometimes. You're, it seems like you're getting skinny. Did you? Is that all <laughs> that you had? 
I could it, make yeah, you the, some the, blueberry soup. <laughs> the point of the point of the diet I'm on is to get skinny. So I appreciate the blueberry soup. Oh, honey, soup, that's I, not no, honey, it, that's bad. I know you're being grandma right now, and I love it. Can we uh, address the laundry situation? She's real crying. Quick? <laughs> yeah let me so you just That's, walk up okay grandma uh, yesterday i ate this and this and this my stool looked great uh i am my room is clean uh, i my car does need gas uh my friends are <laughs> all kind of not doing very well so let's talk about herman melville yeah this isn't a uh it's it's <laughs> odd that's an interpersonal communication on a non uh business level when you do business tactics on a personal situation like that it's awkward and forced I said it, it can be done but eventually they're just going to stop talking to you which might be the goal <laughs> okay so to bring in altitudes a little bit let's just say let's just say for let's just say for the sake of argument like you're at turquoise or whatever so <laughs> you're like pretty pretty stable cognitively in this kind of like higher higher understanding or something and you're okay. you've accepted at this point that nobody's interested in it nobody wants to engage with it like in general like you have to go out and find other people that are kind of like experiencing these same sorts of things but that is your reality and as second tier, you're you're doing this thing where you accept the reality of other people and you integrate with it and you integrate those parts of yourself. But mm -hmm. you're also trying to share your reality with people who are not accepting it. And so it's like to what as a leader, and and we know that you it's a bad idea and a bad approach to try to grow other people up, given. Mm -hmm. But yeah, how do you bad. exert that presence towards development? at any level how can you actually engage in a way that is that is you're secretly they don't know what you're trying to do but you're secretly trying to pump in some sort of narrative into their mind with your skillful tactics depending on the time frame so if this is a short thing hour or less first you need to know what personality they type are they are they analytical yeah. are they creative like you need to know that once you know that um, you can start to talk to them on that level. Do they need examples or do they not care? Do they need something written down? Are they a visual person? Like, do you need to draw little charts? The, the analytical, do you need to pose what you want to talk about as a problem? If they're, if they're non-receptive, uh, change the topic because this is just going to be, <laughs> unless it's business, this is going to be not pleasurable for either of us. And, I'd wait for a cue that they gave. Maybe I could tie something into, but the first time that they do a physical cue, like they're not cutting you off or anything, but they, they cross their arms or they turn slightly away or they start to look out the window more. Like, well, you're, you've lost them and you're wasting your time. Let's get real in, in it. Like say, say there's a person that you really enjoy, like you like them, but the fact of the matter is, behaviorally, for various reasons, they will spend 100% of the interaction blasting you with information. They're just high energy, they have a lot of things to tell you, and because of that, you will not get to share a single thing with them unless you become fairly forceful or, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I think you get it, right? So w how do you deal with that? Because I get I get trapped in things occasionally. <laughs> and it's like, I do accept it. I do want to be there. Otherwise, I would just fucking walk away, right? I want it, right. but I also want to... Yeah, you wanna, can always leave. I want to butt myself in there more. And, and it feels rude, but maybe butting in isn't the thing. So yeah, let's address that. I think that's... Are you one. interested in what they're telling you? Sure. And I just, just have things to say fast, too. Or? Yeah, yeah. I just have, I want to contribute to the conversation. I want to participate in it. I want to have my perspective included in, in our in our interaction. So I would start by saying, "Let me ask a question, like out loud. Let me ask. Let me let me ask a question really quick. Oh, okay. And then I would summarize. Before I ask any question, I would get my understanding of the situation in. Let me ask you a question real quick. So if A plus Z equals Q, from what I'm understanding from what you're telling me is Q is basically a mirror of H. How do we, and then you can ask your question, but if you, if you just say, well, how is Q a mirror of H? Then you've only given it up, you haven't interrupted their pattern. Or you can do a pattern interrupt, which is dropping a bomb that has nothing to do with anything that's going on right now. 
<laughs> that makes them stop and think. A redirect. Your grandma's doing it to you. What did you eat yesterday? It's disruptive. You don't know what you don't know what to do because your pattern was interrupted. Yeah. Well, I had a, I ate, I ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Well, what were they? Well, she's taking you completely out of that. Probably not on purpose, but you see how your th- whole thought process was thrown off by something that had nothing to do with anything that was going on. So if A plus Z equals, it, it, where did you get that shirt? But uh, okay, no. This Q person, this person will ignore of... that and continue talking about their point, though. Is what I'm saying. And this is a dick. Really? <laughs> Man, that's the, themselves talk. that sucks. I know a lot. I have a lot of friends that do this. Yeah, um, I, if you're and into I interact it, then... with a lot of people that I'm like intrigued by, but they do this, and I'm like, should I just not? Should I just not with this person? If you're incapable Man. of interaction, then it's just a lecture. So only hang out when you're ready for a lecture. Or from what you want no, to be lectured on. You really just can't like leader sh- leader that out of like a little bit more. Uh, maybe yeah. I mean that's kind as of as a leader. I wouldn't tolerate consistent situations like that. I would remove myself. Or before the whole thing started, I would front load and say, "Hey, last time we met, I was really interested in this, uh, but you kind of overloaded me on information. Can we slow it down and have a little bit more of a dialogue?" You could try, but it seems See, like this this personality type is a, is like a intellectual alpha, and getting them to ooh, slow down or stop is is uncomfortable for them. Yeah. Wow. Well. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not say, I'm not saying they're a bad person. I'm not no, saying no, it's a no, bad no. interaction. But if it gets to the point where you're frustrated that you weren't able to talk, either you didn't try to talk enough. Or they wouldn't allow you to talk. Both of those would be, for me, unacceptable. Next time, I'm going to try and talk more. And then if it fails again, well, this person just doesn't let anyone talk. And then I move the things into different bugs. Like, this is a person who's a wealth of knowledge on this, but it's basically going to be reading a textbook. It's not an interactive thing. In terms of front-loading and the potential for offending someone, this is probably a bad idea. But let's say I take this person aside one moment and I'm just like, Mm -hmm. you know, in a conversation, what percent of the time do you think each party should talk? Like, what's your general perspective on that? So that we could, because you know they're going to say, um, you know, about equal unless like one person. 40, 60. That's, that that is a reasonable position. But that's an automatic. But I can set, I, I am so hyper focused on the incoming and outgoing of communication. And a lot of my really mm-hmm. good friends are brilliant, brilliant people. Um, actually, not a lot, but a couple of my really good friends We're are really, all really, on the spectrum, Adam. <laughs> are all really brilliant people who will just share broadcast, 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 and you are not allowed by their personality to participate. So it's like, Mm -hmm. you, I want them to exist. I like that, but I want to exist too. And I want to participate. And Mm -hmm. it it is a personality thing. It's a passivity thing. And it actually got worse when I got into spirituality because the humble like Buddhism thing is to kind of allow or to be like the water. And so when you encounter that- Why do you think Buddhists go up to the mountains to be dead alone? (laughs) Yes. No one cut (laughs) you off. (laughs) <laughs> uh, so I have been in that person in a lot of training situations, but I, knowing that of myself, front load the situation like, listen, if you ask me a question, you are going to get from Genesis to the apocalypse of information. And you're going to need to stop me at any sort of rest stop so I can so, fill okay, in. You Otherwise, that I'm per- just going to go from beginning to end. When you're being that person, you're introducing that awareness. Mm-hmm. But you don't have this I, I'm problem. I'm allowing them to cut me off. You don't have this problem. I and can. They, they won't do that. You can't. I don't. I not learned I had this problem. When I first became like a one-on-one coach and trainer, it was the feedback I received afterwards that like, yeah, you know, you kind of gave me the entire history of the thing and then how the thing is manufactured and then how we use the thing and how other industries use the thing and then how to troubleshoot. I, I, was, I wasn't able to get a question in. Through that sort of development on my own side, I'm not going to stop doing that, but I'm going to give you the golden ticket to pause that whenever you want and not offend me. 
And so now when I'm going and going and going and going and they say, hey, oh, hold on a second. Pause. I'm like, yes. What is it? That first sentence you said three hours ago. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah, let's let's dig in because I, what I get out of it is nothing. I get training in training someone else. I get more affluent in training someone else. What they get out of it dictates their future in the career or future in fishing or sport activity whatever i'm here to get you to be better and so if i only not i don't want to say better because that would assume they're bad i wanted to make you more proficient at something if i don't let you talk which is very easy for me to do i failed pull the person aside and say mm-hmm what amount that's almost accusatory you're like trying to get and it's them kind of to passive aggressive i think yeah just yeah. say it up front hey man uh good to see you again last time we talked uh i felt like i couldn't get a word in edgewise oh yeah uh, sorry about when... that dude yeah i know it's kind of like a thing oh, that i have on, you know in a, yeah, yeah? Hey, okay, T, okay. time out time out time yeah. out uh, this but, is I, what but I, I do want to do. cover that later like can we talk about that later we will. I was gonna... yeah, okay. God, we're gonna cover All we're right. gonna cover everything in honey but i'm gonna do a timeout uh when i need to ask a question is that cool oh yeah man i'm, I'm like really good at listening to questions you know like because like, when, when my dad was like uh when i was being raised like he would ask questions all the time and i would just answer the question like immediately because i always knew the answer and mm-hmm. no. well now you're listening and, uh, i'm gonna wait <laughs> i'm gonna wait until i need to throw the time out i've created rules dude okay so for passive people like me if you're in a conversation and you're doing this like Oh gosh, that's really hard. <laughs> so just sacking up and, and uh, taking that, taking that little awkwardness that you well, feel that's not even necessarily real. It's just something you experience. Yeah. It's not even like maybe the first couple of times sacking up. How dare you? You're, you're, you're laboring up. <laughs> Much tougher in yeah. Oregon. Uh, like your backpack. It takes a little bit of bravery, I suppose, at first, because it's it's something new to you. I see. Uh, but I'll do that. I'll do that to fucking people who want to fire me, who are in the process of firing me. Okay. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I'm not going to, like, talk over them. I'm not going to escalate the situation. I'm just going to... Eventually, they're going to be like, all right, what? What? Floor is mine. Isn't it a nice day? <laughs> the person you were talking about who isn't interested in what integral or or, oh, or, anything, or anything like that anything or or and everything mm-hmm. if you were to take them aside and and try to do the aha that's a sales pitch that fails almost every time yes there's a lot of buyer's remorse if they do purchase what you're selling because you've kind of tricked them into it not really how much how much 50 50 60 40 oh yeah I'm, I'm always the person who gives 50 50 I'm, I'm listening as much as i'm talking and then you say well uh how much how much of this conversation do you think it was because i'm i'm counting like 80 20 well that was just that was just that was just this one or i'm counting like 80 20 okay yeah i guess i guess you're right but it's this this conversation like normally i'm just what there's no winning there's like they're not going to realize it like that yes when you throw up pause 10 times <laughs> then after the conversation like wow we, we you know adam had some really good ideas it was weird that he had to throw it up 10 times maybe they get it maybe they don't this could be an auditory narcissist the you know now we're getting into the realm of like i said we're, we're all on the spectrum and have deficiencies somewhere it might be that they just don't realize that they're doing this to you through of course, some sort of, course, of yeah uh you know affliction it's not it's not learned it's like ingrained could be it seems like what you're saying is if you're like me and you have this issue or this uh, trouble with being assertive or having a lot of people who broadcast if if you're like that there are all these things you can do essentially you just have to accept that this is the nature of the situation i think is what and part of it if yeah. you do Big bring part. that awareness with them and you and, and it is intense this is intense for a person like you to do and we're saying it gets less and less intense it's like a developmental arc but for me that's mm-hmm. an intense thing to do to manage the conversation and tell people first you're talking too much awkward. of the time yeah and yeah. so you get better oh, at yeah. that okay 
And also, but if you do that and they, and they just keep doing the thing, you just have to accept this is the personality is the that thing. you're dealing with there. They do yeah. outgoing communication really well, but you don't get to exist in their reality. You don't get to share anything with them. And this is the nature of your relationship. If you're okay with that. That's rough. Yeah. Great. But that's what's up. <laughs> if you're not okay with that, it, it's a hard pill to swallow, but also great. Cause you're the better for it. It's the frog and the scorpion right yeah. the, the the frog gets Fucking stung frog. in the middle of the lake but sometimes you need those clamps so to, to kind of summarize what we've talked about so far is floating the conversation uh, front loading eat that frog like tackle the hardest thing first make a list like with the person in the moment power framing i don't really want to get into because it's it can be yeah it's a whole topic a lot. Yeah. that's that's dark art stuff yeah executive presence signals setting rules um, mm -hmm. Yeah, your executive presence will have a lot to do with it. Creating the time lean buffer back zone. And armed cross. Yeah. Presentation. Oh, let me just say something real quick. Like this whole time, you've been a, a stone. Like, if you're actively listening the entire time, not in the situation where you're, you know, you're getting word vomited on, but it's a lot easier to sneak in if you're right at the door instead of like having to come up the stairs and then they, oh, yeah, now I'm in the door. You know I mean? And then gold bricking, creating a buffer zone with the time, not doing everything mm -hmm. right stiff to the schedule because not everyone will do scheduling the same way as you. Not everyone and appreciates your always, time as much as you do. Always remembering to consider the other person, their personality, their needs, and what you want out of the situation. And yeah, I mean, I think this is all really good advice for uh, anyone, really. I think this is important stuff. Like, I'm a person who's really focused on this for whatever reason. It's It's been a focus in my life for a really long time. I, I don't know if I'm neurally different or something, but I'm so focused on like how much you broadcast versus how much you receive and, and how, how much, how people are so different in that regard. I, I think I've, I am at that point. I mean, I'm, I'm, I think that I've integrated or, or somewhat integrated all the things we're saying, and it's just kind of disappointing. It's like, you kind of just, man, I wish I could really get the person to understand this dynamic where they, they're having this close personal or or functional professional, whatever it is, they're having this thing with me that I'm not having the same thing as them at all. Cause I, I'm just taking them. They're not taking me or the other way around, which is what you were describing earlier. You're... I'm yeah, just broadcasting I, and I you. Had to be I told. never listen. I never take your thing in. I had to be told. And then even after that, it took a while before I started to notice. And then further down the road, it was longer before I started taking action. And then yeah. farther <laughs> down the road, we are now is it now it's normal that this is, I can be let's let's point out okay. too in the lines that you just described this dynamic in lines where it starts with the cognitive understanding you can't have the others without and then it moves to your values and emotions because you have that cognitive now you feel Get it over it and it's real <laughs> yeah. to you and then finally your second tier or whatever trickles down into your actual physical behavior in the universe. Like I do work. until that point, you haven't actually used it or done anything with it. You've just existed with it as a potential. <laughs> there is no better or worse place to practice. Right at the end there, you were talking about almost a, an imaginary conversation about the, the word vomit person. This might be a breakup talk. Friend, coworker, Oof, yeah, relationship. Yeah. This might be like a, until you... Can, until I can be heard in our conversations, I'm not super interested in having conversations for a while. Damn. Yeah. Like, man, I'm sorry. I'm just really frustrated because I, I, I have this thing where I, I feel like I'm not being able to say anything and I can't do anything about it. And so, I don't know. I did, I, maybe we should spend some time um, not talking taking to crack. Other <laughs> yeah, talking to other people. I think we should just, I think we should just talk to other people for a while. <laughs> well, I think that I think we kind of nailed it. I think this is a beautiful talk. It wasn't hilarious, but it was course. smart. Yeah. It was smart. Yeah. Um, so why don't you give us a little bit of cowboy? Why don't you cowboy up? Well, about time to hit that old dude trail. I'll see you down to campsite. Awesome. Join us on our Discord and do give us comments. We'll try. We'll try. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Very nice. That yeah. was a good episode. That was a good episode, especially with all the fucking uh, tech setbacks, man. So this was like a, a this was like a five or ten minute like breakout session. And we were gonna go like discuss with our team that was picked all a minute, 
And I walked over, and the team I was assigned to was already – there was three of them already sitting at one table. Like, they were sitting there for the whole seminar. So when I walked over, I was the only one standing because there aren't any chairs here. And they were kind of talking to themselves, and then I would say something, but I was talking down to them, and I was of lower rank. Oh. And so they just kind of, like, blew me off. And so at looking around the room, I was looking at these other groups, how that also wasn't working, at the people standing were the ones, like, not talking. Uh, and they're of equal rank. Uh, and so when I knelt down, I was, like, mid-sentence. I was like, you know what? And, like, got down. I was like, is this better? And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then I started talking. <laughs> and then it became, like, this roundtable thing. Um, and no one was really aware that there was a physical yeah. wedge, like a physical thing making this conversation difficult. And by kneeling down it literally brought us all eye to eye on the conversation. And that sort of in my mind sparked like there, there are infinite ways to uh, alter a conversation. If you, that's what, that's what I wanted to, that's see, I wanted to get here cause it, we could cover the, the basics, but there's tricks. There's looking at your watch. There's hacks, tactics. Yeah. Power moves. Now, I, if someone's I, when you were saying sell you on an idea and they look at their you look at your watch like, oh, they're not interested at all <laughs> or yawn, yeah. anything. Yeah. But um, in terms of physical blocking, I want to do um, I feel like you got that idea because we worked at a at a, at a, establ a, a Chinese establishment and the boss guy was, you know, from Chinese culture. And I think that we had that understanding what, that in a lot of asian cultures this is a thing of of your eye level and yeah. so he would squat down to smoke and we all had to squat down too because we didn't want to be above the boss and that was offensive <laughs> yeah good, 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 good. but we can't have, squat have down because we don't have the hamstrings and we're fit <laughs> that squat Everyone is can tough squat on the balls of their feet squatting yes. flat-footed takes like yoga I can, yeah, I can do it now because I'm Liller, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I can because of the years of servitude for the Chinese, but most people, <laughs> they'll squat and they're like on the balls of their feet, like trying yeah. to balance. Roll in, like, yeah. I don't know. With their I don't, arms this like, isn't comfortable at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like go flat footed and then they can't. Like if you go flat footed, you're It's those heels. Like, yeah. Rest. This is the heels of uh, Westerners are, are really not flexible. Mm -mm. I don't I don't know what's up with that, but they just, yeah, the calves we and heels. Squat. Yeah, they, yeah, because uh, they don't squat. Yeah. Our toilets don't make us squat three times a day. However many there times you, you shit, I don't know how many times you shit. <laughs> 12, 15. I don't know, Baker's dozen. Oh, I eat McDonald's all the time and I never shit. Yeah, there you go. And that's why. What did you oh, eat Sophie. yesterday, honey? Oh, uh, I, oh God. Dude, two days ago, I went to Taco del Sol and got a, a burrito. And then I'm with my friends who are like, let's go get tacos. I'm like, okay, I can't, I do want to do that. So I ate Mexican, like fake Mexican twice. In, well, mm -hmm. one real, one fake, like twice in a row. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, don't do that. Don't, don't get tacos and burritos like two different times in a day. The next day it's my birthday. So I, the, someone took me to get like a, like a steak sandwich. So, oh my God, I'm, okay. I'm a wreck. I'm a wreck. I, I can't handle all this like meat and, uh, bombardment I, i've been on a diet of like practically nothing except for rice and vegetables every now and then and junk food when i'm about to die I've, yeah i've been thinking <laughs> about your diet actually uh, honey fueling just fueling the body are pistachios something you you put Ooh. you throw in there let's do it yeah let's get some pistachios they're uh, some the israeli stars. army that's like basically all their survival kit is because it's well like you know what food. let's not talk about the israeli army right now well, no, I just mean, kidding. Let's let's talk about it. Little <laughs> little bit of turmoil right now, but nah. it, as as a whole, flash in the pan. Everyone is everyone has to join, and pistachios are part of their thing because you can survive a fair while on just pistachios. Damn! All right, all right. So I liked uh, when I was poor to make rice with uh, I would put my rice in the rice cooker. I'd put uh, bouillon cubes in there so that the rice was flavored chicken or beef or whatever. And then I'd put pistachios in there and let them all cook. And then they're not like, it's like oh. Indian food nuts. They're like a little softer, but I got the, the protein, the amino acids. Uh, I got a bunch more out of it. Out of How can I get squishy pistachios? 
How can I get squishy pistachios? <laughs> put them in with the raw rice. Oh, so you just take raw pistachios and you, and I put them in my rice cooker and they'll be like a little, they'll be like, that's a thing you can get away with? Yeah. Cool. Put a, uh, uh, Sometimes I would put turmeric in with the bouillon cube and then you basically have like, it's porridge. But the, the pistachios are, pack a lot of punch. You get a lot out of them. Well, there you go. I'm going to get some pistachios. Nuts. I didn't always, I didn't always have pistachios.